Da, 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 da. Hello everybody, my name is Rodgon. I am an artist, I am a designer, and I need to fix my lighting. <laughs> there you go, that's a little better. Anyways, hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Uh, today we are going to be drawing together. So grab your sketchbooks, grab your pens, grab whatever you like drawing with the best, and I'll uh, get questions ready. Like, hey, how's it going? Buffy356, hi. Mr. Jedediah, hello. See, see, it's not a pre-recorded message. Yeah, that seems to be the case that like everybody thinks that it's a pre-recorded thing, but it's not. It's live. Or I guess, like, the names of people really well. So, I noticed something when I was watching. Uh, I was just, like, watching some, you know, stuff online. Some anime. And I realized a little measurement that they, they use. Just from, like, observing the, the drawings. So, most of the time, or in a lot of the cases, they'll start with a circle, or a sphere, and then they'll put the eyes towards the bottom of the sphere. And then they'll use that as the anchor point for the jaw. Ta-da! Now you have anime faces. Uh, yeah, because it's a tiny nose that's normally represented with, uh, curvature. And then you have your, your lips. Now let's try it in a different view, okay? Let's try a, a different little sketch. So we have our sphere. We're going to put our eyes towards the bottom. And then we'll draw our midline into what our nose would be coming out, right? Our nose is coming out. So we make our nose come out into our jaw that doesn't point down. It points to the side, right? So it points like downwards. So we have this and then downwards would be down here. So we follow the jaw. Yeah, hey, that's actually pretty nice. A nice little uh, solid way of seeing it. It simplifies it a lot. Interesting. I'll refine that and I'll... Uh... Oh, well, you guys have not... Day two asking for clouds. I drew clouds yesterday. And... I showed you guys how to draw clouds, and I showed you guys how to draw clouds in, like, three-dimensional shapes. Uh, but, let me uh, lose our little zoom-zoom powers here. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Hold on a second. Oh, just one of my favorite people in the world has contacted me, and then they... I, I See, honestly, um, it's come to the point where if I actually enjoy talking to you, I'm going to reach out to you whenever I think of you. I'm, I'm too old. I'm getting old. Okay? So the older that you get, the more you start realizing that... You know, if if you enjoy someone's company, just fucking go for it. <laughs> What's the key to drawing heads in any angle? 
Uh, ooh, okay. Uh, key to drawing any angle, torso, legs, and perspective. You know, I have been wanting to do uh, torsos and legs again because uh, that's a topic that we've been doing a lot lately. And it's something that's nice and fresh in my brain. So we will maybe go with that after I finish sketching this weird little face. And we'll fill up the rest of the page with legs. And that will be our topic today. Legs are fascinating. Uh, I still remember when I was learning how to draw legs in general. And it was the hardest thing in the world to get right. And it's it's the same reason that I thought that women were so hard to draw. It's because they're subtleties. There's so many little freaking subtleties that just like throw off anything that's not drawn right correctly, right? It, like two people can approach the same little uh, scribble and one of them will have a perfect drawing of legs and the other one will have like weird wonky legs. And it's not, it's so much about like just knowing where to place things as opposed to how to draw the things. And, uh, it leads to a lot of frustration down the line because you normally, uh, it takes a while to get to that second stage. So, by the way, I'm going to keep these, um, these streams a little bit shorter and more concise to a theme. So that way, whenever we upload them to uh, YouTube, uh, we can theme them behind whatever... Uh, like theme is yesterday's was much more about perspective and you know uh turnarounds and that one's on youtube already i put it on youtube immediately so that's gonna be the thing nowadays uh i'm gonna do our stream we're gonna talk about whatever we're gonna talk about legs and then we're gonna go directly onto youtube because i am a responsible creator and this is my livelihood. <laughs> so I should probably take it a little bit more serious. <laughs> but I am who I am. Love me for who I am, not for what I do. Uh, okay, so legs. Legs are one of the most fun parts of your body. And I have come to really, really enjoy drawing legs. Uh not so much because, um, like, any particular thing that I like about legs more than any other body part. and But when I learned how to draw them, it became more so of, like, a personal accomplishment that was just waiting and itching to get out. Right? Like, I've been wanting to draw legs properly and know how to draw them for years. And the moment that I was able to draw something, like, difficult and not have to hide a leg or a knee or, like, a fold or anything like that, then I considered myself uh, an accomplished leg drawer. <laughs> the moment that I look forward to drawing that body part as opposed to hiding it, that's when you know that you uh you have learned to draw that body part properly. So, the key to drawing legs is going to come to down to a couple things. You're going to have to understand how they connect to the torso. Right, the connection is a lot simpler than people give it, uh, like think about. They just complicate things a lot more for themselves, and it's normally based on having an understanding of things going in perspective. 
So it's going to require you to understand a couple concepts. And let me explain to you guys what those concepts are going to be, because that's going to be a very, 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 very important understanding of, you know, if you're going to get this lesson or not. And if you don't have this knowledge, I'm going to tell you how to get it. Okay. So first of all, excuse my fan because my fan is uh, the only thing keeping me alive right now. My fan is my friend. It's really hot where I live. And until that happens, a uh, little fan's going to be going off once in a while. I also have my iced coffee with the best mug ever, thanks to one of my apprentices. So this is also your reminder that you're awesome. So don't forget that. All right, leggies. So the way that they connect to the body is a very a little bit different than what other people like to. Uh... Hey, it's a big gulp. I have a big mouth. I'm a big dude. <laughs> okay, so the leg. We're gonna focus on seeing them from the front right now. The leg connects to the torso at the hip line. If we simplify this hip bone to its bare simplicity, it's going to be something like this. Okay? Essentially, your pelvic area, your pelvic bone, is a bowl. It's like a bowl for your organs. Beep, 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 beep. That's why they call it the pelvic bowl. All your organs and all that stuff, that's where it sits. And then your rib cage is right there. Okay? So this is essentially a little bowl, but it has openings on both sides. So if you had an opening within a bowl, if you drew a bowl, and you had an opening in the bowl, you get that shape. Right? So, I like to simplify my hips all the way down to this. And I'll explain, like, why. So, first of all, this provides me both. Oops, I'm not doing the live thing. Sorry about that. I'll do that because uh, it's a distraction from the lesson. Um, and I have to answer this and ask this every single time. So, <laughs> just don't, don't, that's not the best way to ask things. I am drawing with a pen. I am drawing with a big pen. I like these because they just don't, like, gump up at the top. So, we have our shape, right? That is our general shape for our hips. I personally like to define a front line to it, which makes it look like underwear. That way I have whatever part of my hip or underwear line or uh, groin area is going to be blocking from my other leg. Now... The other, the legs start off from the top of the hip bone. And they come out. Boop, boop. And then the inside of the hip bone is going to have a gap. That gap is literally where your genitals are going to be. All right, so this is a bowl. Remember, it's a bowl. Seeing this from the top, from the bottom. Remember all those action figures? Uh, I don't know if you had action figures when you were growing up, but I did. So they always had this like weird little like ball, like like lower body. 
so I always refer back to thinking about that a lot because then it just makes me think I can draw my leg and I can get used to where it's supposed to be positioned by just simply drawing that same leg going in all certain directions just from that same pelvic area. Right? From that same pelvic area. We're drawing legs today. How do you draw that leg going in all these directions? Like, how would it look if you did that with, you know? You'd start getting compression points at some point whenever you're moving to a direction that it would hit the bone. Because this is technically your bone, right? You're drawing your bone. This is just a simplification of a hard surface inside your body. So the hard surface meets the soft surface of the inside tissue of your leg, and it creates a compression point. I'm out. I'm too dirty for this to be happening. Um, well, I mean, drawing things like this should not necessarily be a, like an erotic thing. Uh, I can draw people looking ugly if you prefer. <laughs> but, yeah, if you feel weirded out by it, don't worry. It's, it's, it's just you. <laughs> and as you go around your body, you start seeing how it's compressing against the rest of your body shape. Okay, you start actually playing with the motion, and the next time that you're actually tasked with drawing a leg in a different direction, you're not going to be uh, flabbergasted. You're not going to be confused. You're not going to be uh, taken back. You know, you're going to be able to draw it because you have learned the secret <laughs> to, you know, posing different parts. And you can do that with different party parts, too. So let's say you have your calf, right? And you want to learn how to move your calf around. So the calf normally connects to the back of your leg. So if your kneecap, if this is the back of your leg, right? Because they're uh, looking at this as this being the back of the pelvic bone. The front thigh muscle goes around. You get your back calf muscle that connects to the back of your thigh. Not the back of your kneecap, but the back of your thigh. And then it comes out. Same thing happens here, creating this little, like, bullet or little oval with a little cap top into the inside of your thigh that tends to be a little bit more straight, but it also has the soft tissue on the inside that I like to call the squish zone. Okay, so this area right here, it's the squishy part that compresses against your, your body. Now you can feel the inside of your thigh right now and you'd probably feel a little bit of softer tissue than if you, you know, touch the muscle outside of your thigh on the outside. Let's give me a second. There you go. All right, so the thing you can do is you can go into different body parts and then try to play with how far you can move those body parts as well. So the calf does not necessarily look good going that direction. So you can go like, eh. So we have a smaller amount of rotation available from that angle for it to look right. But... We can also use this 
to learn how to draw things into perspective. And remember, I'm using a pen, right? So I, I have minimal amount of erasing, but I'm still able to just generally get the concept down. And it's going to help me the next time that I have any assignments in which I have to draw a difficult position. Essentially, I'm adding all these things to a mental library. And my man, like, mental library is what's going to allow me to draw all these things from memory at one given point or other. So, the more you actually practice... by drawing shapes like this, you'll understand posing a lot more. Right? And then you can do the same thing with your feet. Like, getting down to your feet, you can have your ankle, right? And have your foot. In this case, it'll be uh, it would be like relatively flat looking that way. Okay, so we have our foot, we have our ankle, and we have the rest of our foot. And now we can start playing with limitations for that too. So if we have our ankle up here, then that means that our foot is going to be pointing down. Right? If we have a foot, a foot can only pivot up to a certain amount of space. So if we have our foot and we have our little pivoty part, or ankle, we have our heel and we have the front of our foot. Now, we can only rotate so much up and down before it starts looking really weird. So if we rotate this all the way up, right, the heel would be coming out right here means that it can't really go any further because it is physically hitting bone against bone. So, from there, you just trace that shape back down, and you come up with the limitation for that body part. Boop, boop. That's about as far as you can go for your foot, going back. Now, going forward, we do the same thing. That looks a little bit weird to me. You know, that's a little too far. So we gotta bring it back a little bit. And then we have just found the limitation of where my foot can go. It can go from there to there. All right, so after we understand that we can, you know, learn limitations by, you know, drawing the shapes like that, let's, let's learn the shapes that we need to draw so in order for us to actually be able to learn these things. So the first thing that I told you guys that you need to learn in order to be able to draw legs a lot easier is you got to have an understanding of the difference between a flat shape, like a circle, and a 3D shape, like a sphere. So if you need to know the difference between these two things, that's the number one thing. Now, the next thing you need to learn how to do is you need to learn to draw things on both sides of your object. So you need to be able to learn to draw things on one side and learn to visualize going to the other side and then seeing those things too in every direction. So you need to just learn how to visualize the front and the back of your drawings. 
exercises that help are doing exercises like these. Tracing the top of your shape and then dotting the line on the other side. Tracing the front and then dotting the other side. And then just do it on spheres. It's going to look like little atom like things. You can do it in different directions. So you can do it all like this. Just get used to tracing over your object. Subdividing the object as close to its perspective in perspective as you can possibly like get it. But it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be subdivided close to like efficiently. Now, it doesn't have to be just spheres either. Uh, you can practice with all sorts of shapes, right? You can practice with cubes and then practice putting like a rubber... Essentially, you're practicing like you're putting a rubber band around your object, right? But you're figuring out And getting used to the direction changes that happen. Then we have uh, cones are an interesting one too. They are pretty good to know. Just because of the curvatures. And the decreasing size of them. So it's just good exercises. And since these are simple shapes. Right? It's going to not be a daunting task. Now, how is this going to translate onto our actual leg? Well, our leg is all basic shapes. We just got to learn what basic shapes that we got to draw. Right? And they're not just like basic cones and basic... Uh, they're not basic little super simple shapes and that's why it's complicated it's complicated because these are not easy to draw all the time because they're complex and they change and they flex so like it's a combination of hard surfaces and soft surfaces muscles uh, tendons it's it's a, it's a lot of information to uh to try to like you know simplify to just like draw a cone draw draw a box uh, draw a line like it's just too much like if everybody could like you know like draw that that if everybody could just simply like be like oh well that's just that part everybody would be an artist right everybody would just uh pick up a pencil and be like oh well this is just the way you do it nah nah but no art is art is hard <laughs> art is really hard and like, it's already incredibly difficult to visualize things the way that we need to visualize things, you know, like, to be able to put them on paper. But it's it's even harder to, like, understand it in the way that other people, like, can explain it. Because it's just, like, all our brains don't work the same, okay? Like, I always like to say, it, it, uh, if you just don't grasp a concept, it's not necessarily that you're dumb or that you don't have aptitude for it. It's probably just the fact that your instructor is just not teaching in the way that makes sense to you. So, if you try to make a fish climb a tree, it's always going to think that it's dumb. And it's going to think it's incapable. So, don't be a fish trying to climb a tree. Find your element. Find the way that it's going to make sense to you. And that's what I did. You know, like I, I couldn't find teachers that would teach the way that I needed to learn. So I just set off onto the world and started trying to learn on my own. And then at the same time, try to teach people what I learned. Uh, slack towel. 
Yeah, I was awesome as long as everything was straight on. As soon as I try to do any angles. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. Uh, we get so used to drawing a style that we forget that we're supposed to be drawing an actual shape. So, let's get to the, to the leg shapes, okay? Since the legs connect at a... slight angle and it's a realistic hip is a lot less angle than this but this is more like where I could pin up right so I have my hip bone the simple shapes for a leg come down to two little teardrop shapes but the trick is understanding how to place them and where to place them, right? This is as simple as it simple can get. It's just literally a beanbag or a figure eight. The shapes are exactly the same size. So it's, and it would translate to something similar to this. So it, it looks pretty nice. Let's, uh, let's detail one out. Something like that could just be translated to something like this really easy. Okay, so... I would say something like this would be a nice initial starting point for you guys to start like understanding how and why certain elements bump up, certain elements fold, certain elements overlap, and you know what to look for whenever you're drawing legs. So the first thing that I like to think is obviously the roundness of my hips, like how wide do I want my hips to be on a pinup? It'll be relatively wide because I want those nice wide hips, right? I want super wide hips on my pinup so I have wide hips. Now, an average character, like, you know, like just your average character is going to have a lot less hips. So the legs are going to come down a little bit more straight. So the more you angle them and get them out wider, the more like space you're going to have for wider hips. If you do that with men, it just makes them look really slender because you still like don't have hips as a dude. So if you have like a really tall one, but not like really wide hips, so your legs still stick out a little bit but not much, you end up with just a more slender body, but with more feminine hips. <laughs> the arms. No, 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 we're talking about legs. We're concentrating on one topic per day <laughs> because we normally jump around a lot. Uh, but I try, I'm trying to make it a little bit more so people that can um, like look things up on like online can find tutorials to specific things a little bit easier. So uh, essentially, and it's going to be like good feedback for me as well to be able to uh, understand if I can teach a topic like, properly without just jumping around to a different one. Okay, so the first thing that we have to consider when we are drawing legs is the width of our hips, right? You pitch it. Next thing is going to be how long my leg is going to be. So my legs, I like to measure them out like this. If I have my rib cage and my hips, that distance right here from 
probably from like the collarbone. The collarbone to the shoulders. Roughly from that area to my hip bone, it's gonna be my thigh. And you know how I know that? Because right now I'm bending my knee and I'm literally seeing how far my knee can go. And I can touch my chin, but I'm a lot more flexible than most people. So that means that most people are going to be around this area. So that means that that distance has to be the distance that goes onto my first part of my leg. So if we add that leg, hey, that doesn't look too bad. And then that distance, that's from there to the knee. So that's including the kneecap. Now, that same distance is going to be measured out to get the second part of my leg, but it's going to overlap behind my thigh. So we're going to take that same distance and overlap behind the thigh. And you get a properly sized leg. Woo! How cool is that? You have properly sized legs for your characters now. Very easy. So that's the proportions that I like to uh, keep. One, two, one. And then this one's overlapping. One. Okay. So now if we are going to our actual drawing and we want to figure out the shape of that. Remember, it's just a teardrop for the front. And the teardrop takes you all the way to the knee. The second part of your leg starts after your kneecap. So after you have your knee, I like to represent the knee by simply just drawing a shadow in whatever direction is opposite the light source of my scene. So if my scene is going to be lit from this direction, and it's a high angle, then it would cast a shadow on that side. Simple enough, right? If it's coming from this direction, or from a different direction, let's say it's hitting from underneath. Let's draw another like leggy. If it's hitting from underneath, that would be lit up, so then the thigh would be a little bit in shadow. Right? So, but having that little point right there is actually very beneficial. So if the lighting is coming from that direction, that's how your your leg would be more lit up. Um, okay, so next comes this very important section right here. This section is essentially the overlap of your thigh muscle and your tendons over your calf muscle and your kneecap. So as you can see right here, I didn't connect it. And that's actually the way that it should be because your kneecap isn't necessarily covering the entirety of your front of your leg. It's kind of covering just like the front part right there. The rest of it is muscle. So you have muscles on each side of these things. And the muscles, I'm not exactly sure how the muscles go. I just know that this muscle right here overlaps and connects to your kneecap. So we have a muscle here, a muscle here that connects to the squish zone. <laughs> and then that's what overlaps. So whenever you're drawing, you end up with an overlap of the upper thigh over the calf. So you end up with a situation where most of the time, most of the time, and I'm going to say most of the time because it's a very... Like, there's angles in which it does not look like that. So if you have your thigh, you're going to have your kneecap. And you're going to have the overlapping lines on each side. And then you're going to have a slight overlap. A slight overlap. 
to create the illusion of that happening. Okay? So when we are going into our actual drawing, we have our muscles inside, our little line, and in our overlap. The inside muscle of our calf and the outside muscle of our calf is the same muscle. So let's start thinking about this as a little bit different than, well, the outside is bigger, the inside is smaller. Like, let's actually, like, understand what we're drawing as we go, and then you'll have a lot easier time when it comes down to actually drawing it. So with your calf, what's going on? The calf muscle, wee. And if you're liking this stream so far and you're learning anything, uh, hit that little uh, little heart button because that's the only thing that tells in the like you know the algorithm that I'm doing it. So click the little tiny heart. It helps me out so much. Uh, it's like ten. Ah, uh, so let me take a small break uh, to rest my hand while you guys look at Mister uh, Platypus. And you guys can talk to Little Rod. Hey, guys, how's it going? Uh, hope you guys are doing good. Uh, I haven't been looking at the chat or anything. Here, let me zoom out so you guys can see Little Rod. I draw. I want to be an illustrator. Oh, well, being an illustrator is uh, is kind of a cool job. I do it every day. Uh, I highly recommend it. But it does take a buttload of dedication to do this right it takes a buttload of yes a buttload and i mean like a big buttload not a little buttload a big buttload of work so if you are going to want to do this as a living get ready to um to always think that you're not ready but at the same time having to be forced to be ready and that's the only way that i can describe it that it would make sense is that, uh, yeah, it's um, actually this figurine is from this guy called Summit 1G, but I added things to it to make it look like me. <laughs> All right, let me take another sip and then we'll get back to the lesson. Ah. All right, so zoom, zoom, power, super doop, doop, doop. Uh, most of my tutorials um, help people from all learning stages. So we essentially like little tiny lessons that I do will teach you very basic concepts. Like yesterday we talked about horizon lines, right? This is a very basic concept and talked a little bit about perspective and what level of skill you might be at. And what – like we, we talked a lot about it. A lot about that stuff yesterday so feel free to go check it out uh it's already on youtube and it's under the same name rod Gun, the artist so you can find it like that all right let's talk about calves calves are the most uh annoying part of the actual leg in my opinion because it takes so long to learn how to draw them properly uh i found that it was the easiest way to explain it is to demonstrate a small little graphic like this. Okay, so the calf. This is just somebody's, somebody's booty. Again, that same shape for the hip. Like a little like check mark, whatever. The leg is shaped more like this than it is like this. This is how people get taught how to draw legs. That's wrong. Technically not completely wrong, but it's 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 quite off. <laughs> because that's not necessarily how our legs flow. Yes, they do bend at any given point and they do have that range of motion that a stick like this would have. But if we want to get better at understanding... Oh, wow. There's like six ambulances going on right now. All right. Well, something bad happened. Now, okay. So we have... Our leg flows more like this.
And the only reason that we have this backward, you know, like angle right there is because of the muscle that we decide to div for our calves. Now, most people don't have a gigantic calf muscle, so it doesn't stick out this much, right? So the way that I like to think about it is like this into a straight line. That's the way that I visualize it. The straight line provides me a point from my kneecap down to my heel. Because this bone right here essentially does not really move. This curvature, the thigh, is such a prominent muscle within our, within our bodies that that actually overtakes the, any shape that the bone would have. So that is a more defining feature for the leg than it is, you know, like anything else. So that angle, that curvature, is a very uh, important part to me, at least, when I'm, uh, I'm drawing a leg. Now, let's see how the calf muscle works with this. So, if you wait a little bit closer in, choop, 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 and we start taking those same shapes that we drew. Right? We drew two shapes that are overlapping like that. Let's try to examine a little bit more about what we're drawing here. So, the first part that happens is the overlap of your thigh over your calf muscle into your kneecap. From here, you have your thigh muscle that kind of connect in this sort of pattern. And they extend out onto the rest of your leg. Then this tends to connect to the tendon that overlaps into the kneecap. So this is simplified by just simply creating a little line. But it's not because it's the big muscle that's going over this area. Feel exactly where your connection point is on your knee right now. Extend it, and then touch the sides of your knee. You're going to find that on the outside, you're going to find some hard tendon parties right there. That's essentially what you're drawing when you're drawing that overlap into the bottom muscle of your thigh. Then after that, you're going to have behind this little tendon check that you have. That's where your calf muscle connects to your shin bone. So you have your shin bone, and that normally doesn't have much, like, you know, muscle or anything on it. So it's a relatively hard surface. And then you have your calf muscle that wraps around around your leg and it tapers down until it connects again with your ankle So that is essentially what's going on with your calf. It's going around and creating this sort of a pattern in the back of your thigh, in the back of your calf, back of your bottom part of your leg. Uh, yeah. So when you're thinking about that body part, think about it like this. If you have your ankle and your kneecap
how far out do you want your calf muscle to go? Like, I'd say about at least, it's about halfway up that you would have your calf muscle. And I have a pretty developed calf muscle because I bike a lot. So if this is your kneecap, remember, it connects to the back of your thigh. So it's a little bit over your kneecap where it connects. Okay, connects right up here over the kneecap. And then it just becomes this little tiny like thing that goes around your kneecap like a hot dog. Think about it like that, like a weirdly shaped hot dog from the if yeah, let's draw a hot dog. Let's see if that works. Pew, 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 hot dog. Gonna draw a bone around the hot dog. And then just extend the hot dog from one side a little bit more. <laughs> and that's a pretty accurate way to draw a calf. <laughs> that's actually pretty, uh, that's a pretty efficient way of drawing a calf. Interesting. <laughs> so a calf is essentially a hot dog with the uh, sausage being a little bit long on one side. <laughs> but another way of seeing it, yes, I know how to draw hands, but we're going to stay two legs for this lesson. Um, we have, right, the basic shape that I was talking about, your thigh into your calf, both little teardrop shapes. Now that we understand that the top part is about halfway up, that's where our calf muscle is supposed to go. Then it tapers down into our ankle. Our ankle has our heel. And then we can draw the bottom of the foot to figure out the rest of the shape. So we already know that we have a calf muscle there. If my calf muscle is right there, I know that my thigh muscle, this little part, remember, has to be on the sides of it. So both sides of it, they're going to get that. That's where it connects. And then we have our you know, thigh muscle. So now even like, you know, harder angles like these become a little bit easier. So let's uh, draw some other uh, legs. Uh, we'll go about feet later. Uh, that, that should be a lesson on its own. So, quick drawings of how I would draw legs. Uh, let's go over like that. Some interesting positions, like maybe not like super normal ones. We'll simplify the torso as well. So... This is how I visualize legs. It's not the, the most technical way of seeing them, uh, but it has served a very interesting uh, like purpose, you know, learning how to draw them like this. Um, Essentially, I'm taking like all the basic elements that we have learned as, you know, initial artists and then just applying the little tiny bits of knowledge that I have accumulated for myself. 
and that it has allowed me to, you know, figure out how this works for me. You know, and I like highly, highly recommend that to, you know, anybody out there that's uh, not quite getting what people are teaching or if it doesn't quite make sense. You know, like things just don't, you know, quite click like it does for other people. You know, that doesn't mean that you're a bad artist. That does not mean that you should, you know, uh, like give up on it. Just look for people that will teach you the lessons that, you know, in a way that makes sense to you. Because all it takes is one time for it to make sense. Just once. It just has to make sense once. And then it's kind of impossible to forget I like to call those moments uh oh shit moments or uh light bulb moments or the click the click mostly because it's so rare like it like it does not happen all the time and it's definitely something that only happens like every once in a while to us you know but when it does it tends to level us up so it's kind of like an evolution uh for us in like pokemon it happens every so often and the first time you play the game you don't really know when that's gonna happen but when it happens you're like oh yeah i'm so much more powerful now so essentially, that's what that's what happens when you uh, learn the concept and you understand it. Now you're able to uh, draw that. Oh, one important factor when it comes down to the legs is that when I'm drawing this, right? I'm not. I'm drawing just the leg. I'm not drawing the butt as well. Okay, that's just a connection point with my hip bone. This is just the bone. The bare bone. Okay? So this connection point is just your leg. It's not your butt. Your butt gets connected separate. Your booty is a separate muscle from your, like, leg. I mean, it's still connected, but it's connected as much as your chest is connected to your arm. Right? So think of the butt is separate you add the booty to these shapes after so if this was a character real fast right if this was a character that was getting built up at this point that's when i decide how much booty i want to give but that gets added after okay Bone. <laughs> that is um, little tiny things that will help you uh, figure it out. Legs into perspective is a very interesting thing too. But you can think about them the exact same way. All right? We're going to think about our ankle. We're going to establish our ankle because we need like a grounding point for our perspective. We're going to figure out what perspective horizon point we're going to be doing it to. Let's do it to that one. Just really quickly. doesn't have to be perfect. just has to give us a grounding. From there, uh, I want to establish uh, the two little teardrop shapes. So I'm just going to draw two little teardrops going into perspective. Okay. Well, two little teardrops. From there, I can establish how big I want my foot. So uh, let's say I want my foot to be about that. From that angle, you would only really see the bottom of my foot, the toes, and most of the ankle would be blocked out. If this is the connection point, this is where my kneecap would go. Then I just need to figure out the front of my ankle to my kneecap, that's a pretty straight shot. That's my that's my uh, 
you know, the front of my leg, the part that we map out. Right? We map out this part and then this part. So, shoo, poo. The front the predominant muscle and we map out the calf muscle, uh, the shin because that's the hard surface. Okay? So those are the two mapping points that we figure out. So we have that and then we have the curvature for our thigh. We already know where the ground is, so we can rotate our calf muscle. It's a sphere, but it's touching the ground, and it's going around our, our shin bone. So we just established how thick our shin bone is going to be. And then we draw a little sphere around it. Now we have our calf. Now remember, our calf muscle is behind our thigh muscle, but it's overlapped by our tendon. So we draw a little line. And then from there, we know that the rest of our thigh has to fit within that area. So then our thigh becomes that. And then we have our character in perspective. Very quickly foreshortened. Could probably be a little better. But, hey, for a quick sketch, eh, not bad. Now, when that translates to when you're sketching, it would be, well, very fun. So let's say that we have like a skater, right? You can very easily start doing really cool, uh, you know, poses. Uh... Let's see, skaters have the kicking pose. And as long as you just think of these as very simple perspective tools, like just keep thinking that everything is a 3D shape. It's going to help you visualize things in different angles very quickly. without having to worry too much about everything. I'm just going to choose like super weird like angle arms and stuff. Or shorten. He's like skating and raving at the same time. Draw like a little curve perspective for him. Give him a backwards hat. And he's drinking like a drink. Ah. Some chains. He's a gangster now. With yoga pants. But anyways. Uh, that's essentially how my brain works. My brain works in seeing quick little like gestures and then trying to figure out what I can do with that, right? If I can connect the fact that these are two little teardrop shapes, one, two, into my foot, I can turn any, any, any shape into that. I can then turn that into a leg. Let's uh, try that. Why not? Uh, one teardrop shape. Second teardrop shape. This one looks more like an ankle. So I'm going to make that into the bottom of my foot. And that still looks like a decent foot for like a little thick pinup. Sitting on something. Right? You can turn anything into legs once you understand the concepts behind it. Once you understand how things are shaped, how things are built, 
then you can deconstruct that into things that are easier to stylize. But if you don't understand this, if you don't understand how things are constructed and how things are built, then taking that and stylizing that is going to limit your skill set to just knowing how to draw legs in one style. So with the way that we just learned right now, it doesn't matter if you draw a skinny leg or a fat leg, it's the same concept. Okay? Doesn't matter if it's a human leg or a monster's leg with weird claws and legs and fur and it can be an animal leg as well. It, this concept alone of overlapping shapes for the legs is going to help you draw legs in any single style as well. So you can draw little chibi legs that consist of literally just jelly beans, but now you understand what these little overlaps are. So now you can draw really simple legs, understanding that all this has structure to it. Okay, you can draw that, you could draw like super nice and complex legs for superheroes with rotating ankles and extremities because we learned how to move our you know, elements into different positions and that's going to make it really simple for you to not just draw in perspective but to also be able to play with a higher range of uh, positions and during this whole sketchbook I've been practicing my own posing and my own approach to how I position my characters so you know uh, Teaching you guys helps me a lot, too. So, let's keep it coming. And, like in every single time that we have been drawing lately, I am going to draw a little cute animal to commemorate the finishing of today's sketch. And meanwhile, I would like to, uh, you know, just let you guys know how awesome I believe that you guys are. Uh, I do believe that everybody in this chat room, right now we have about 120-something people on here. Every single one of you has stayed on here because you are both interested in getting better or you have a fascination with art. All those are super awesome reasons for you to follow me. And if you do enjoy and you enjoyed what you, you know, saw today, there is a bunch of more content like this over on YouTube. We have like over 150 videos now with just pure content like this. Right? Like some more structure towards a certain like element, like, you know, how to live as a freelance artist, how to like get out of art block, stuff like that. But there's a bunch more where it's just me chilling, drawing, teaching a concept or two. So if you guys are looking for more to learn and more to actually uh, help you along your journey and you can't find quite the resources that you might need without having to pay out of pocket or anything like that, feel free to go check out my, my channel. Uh, the reason that I create all this stuff is because when I was learning to be an artist, it was very hard for me. Uh, I was not naturally gifted. I was not a person that had like, you know, all the practice from being like a little kid drawing all the way through my life. So it was incredibly hard for me to grasp these concepts like basic perspective or basic anatomy. It was incredibly hard. 
and it helped me back a lot throughout my career. So I aim to help people avoid that, right? Um, I don't know at one point in my life I just decided that I wanted to be the artist that I wish that I had met when I started becoming one. I want to be the, the teacher, mentor, whatever that helps people regardless of their skill set or their skill level. And that's what I plan to do. So the resources are there for you guys if you do want to learn. I provide free knowledge every single day. So feel free to go check out all those resources. And I, if you guys do feel like you want to support, I never ask for any type of donations or anything. But there is a couple things that I do have that you guys can uh, can get. I do have two books. I have a book called Coffee Break Doodles, and I have a book called uh, Pinups. So both of these books can be bought through my Instagram page and my link in my bio. And they are a collection of my favorite sketches and a little bit of knowledge as well for you guys to uh, enjoy. So there is those two options for the ebooks that you guys can purchase from me. And that's all. That's essentially my pitch. <laughs> I do have a new course coming out on 21 Draw soon. So I'm finishing that up, and that has to do with really cute, adorable animals and how to make mascots and how to use those elements to make a living or like how to make money with that. So that is going to be the, the theme of my 21 Draw course. They allowed me to choose my theme this time instead of giving me a random theme. So uh, I went with the thing that I love the most, and that's drawing little, little cute, derpy, silly animals. And I got to make some stickers out of these guys. Uh, we have uh, uh, Boba Taper. We have Sad Platy with his ice cream. Uh, I've been drawing a lot of animals lately. Lots of animal parts. Lots of animal parts. Like we drew uh, Anarchy Axolotl. Uh, I drew ADD Panda. More Anarchy Axolotl. And where is my other one? I drew like a really cute platypus the other day. Uh, drew a whole page of monsters. There he is. Oh, Boba Puss. That's what I'm going to call him. Boba Puss. Lots of drawings of Vicky, man. We have uh, we have learned a lot, a lot in these last few months. Uh, we have dwelled deep into anatomy, into uh, every single aspect of the body, to be able to get better at posing. So it's really fantastic to see a lot of the progress, even from pages like this, even just maybe like two months ago. Seeing the progress in just the smoothness in which I was drawing makes it a lot more encouraging for me to want to go in. But the same process is just being refined over and over and over. Oh, man, I can't wait to scan this and sell this. See, as you can see, even on the more detailed pinups, it's the same concept. It's a teardrop into an overlapping teardrop into the foot. A teardrop into the tendon, into overlapping teardrop. Probably this one, the calf would actually be a little bit more this way, now that I see it. There you go. I usually stream anytime between 8 to 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, it's normally not all that like uh, easy to say exactly what time I'm going to be on. Because I don't normally know myself. I have a very weird work schedule. So I stay up sometimes very late. And then I sleep into like, you know, like 10, 11. But 
you know, sometimes I sleep very early and then I get to wake up early and then do these streams really early so I can get them out of the way. So it really does depend on, you know, my normal schedule. This is, since it's not my uh, main source of income or even a source of income, this is normally uh, it's just stuff that I'd like to do whenever I have a chance to because it's not necessarily something that I'm getting money from. It's just something that I like to do to give back to all the amazing people, you know, all my fans that that are just artists and they they can use something like this. Teardrop into teardrop gives you the length of your bottle. Da da da. Tendon to teardrop. Thigh overlaps over your calf muscle that's underneath your thigh at this point and it just comes up a little bit that's how you draw those sort of positions anyways i hope that you all had a wonderful day learning about legs if you do like what i do Hit that little like button. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, all that random YouTube stuff that everybody... Uh, blah, 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 blah. So, thank you all so much. I love you all. Go sub to me uh, if you like things. Because that's the only way you're going to see things. Uh, yeah. Talk to you guys later. Bye.